Shake Hai Ka! Wow. Wow. Unlike other artists, right? I pushed it with my people. The reason why I kind of sang as a DJ at that time, the late Lee Kuan Yew's office shake my rice bowl. I'm going to call Media Corp and shake his rice The fear of not being able to have that, you know, not being able to make that call is the price I pay for the fame that I requested for. So today we've been graced with the presence of the godfather of Singapore's hip-hop scene. He has mm. put hip-hop on the national stage on mm. TV and made it commercial. Mm. He's also an actor, host and radio personality having appeared in many local favourites such as Army Days as well as Under One Roof and hosted major events including National Day Parades, ESPN's Football Crazy and many more. Let's welcome Shake Haika! Wow. 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 Knowing him as long as I know him more, despite that long introduction, you miss out half the stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's why we have a one-hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. today. So. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. So is that it? There's That's no a, like fanfare, music behind, no nothing. Uh, Post production. Oh, there is. Yeah. Yeah. A bit, a bit. Because if I thought that was it, uh. wow, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank me. Yeah, it's, it's natural. Yeah, thank you. The I practice this in the mirror. The most necessary of us all <laughs> is it's true. It's true. Thank you. Uh, the day. Yeah. For a lot of the younger viewers out there, right, they don't know that you actually started in the scene very, very young when you were only 14 or 15 years old and you already got yeah. scouted pretty much by chance, but you took that chance. So we know that, you know, your mom bought the wrong tape. It ended up okay, being a so, run So that was tape. the introduction to rap. That one was nine years old. Uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips uh, just broke up. The Pips were these uh, three men. <laughs> Thanks for explaining. Yeah. <laughs> the Pips, yeah, were three men who backed up Gladys, who's the lead singer yeah. of Gladys Knight and the Pips. They broke up. And then my mom was at Parkway Parade, uh, saw this uh, tape with three black men on it. And then she's mm -hmm. like, uh, Pips went solo. Yeah. So she bought it, came home, put it on, and it was uh, Run DMC. Wow. So she's like, I don't like this. I said, but I think I like this. So <laughs> I, I said, okay, you can have it. So that was the first uh, hip hop tape mm -hmm. uh, rap. Then after that, of course, came the movies, which was Breakdance, mm -hmm. then Breakdance 2, mm -hmm. uh, Electric Boogaloo, then was Beat Street. So if you want to know about hip hop, like at one, at one go, mm -hmm. about the truth of hip hop, uh, I guess the Bible of hip hop, this is the movie to watch. Because oh. every element is in it. Normal life, normal childhood. Then make some friends and uh, we were friends with uh, Najib right. Ali and he was hosting Asia Bagus. Mm. And back in the day, if you come and watch Asia Bagus, it's $10 per, per audience. audience. Yeah. Oh. Right. oh, you got to pay to watch, huh? Bro, they pay you, you get to watch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sick, right? <laughs> so here we are waiting for Najib to do his job, the host, his uh, three episodes uh, a day. Mm. That's $30 for when I was 14 years old. That's a lot of money, guys. Yeah. Small packet of cigarette was like 150. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> for reference, for reference. <laughs> How long ago, yeah. There used to be a 10 stick packet. I feel like, yeah, I, feel like I feel like the 10 stick was outlawed during my lifetime. Oh, like stop after you, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it was when I started picking up. I think you're, you look young, though. Your before. skin tight as shit. <laughs> <laughs> The skin no one has ever told you. Yeah, really. <laughs> Growing up beside my wife, uh, everyone talk about her skin. And like, my skin was okay, uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm very down with my sexuality. Yeah, your skin. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is the first time that someone complimented my skin. Okay. Sorry. You. No. You no, say. no, no. <laughs> Stay your skin too long. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. So then, uh, waited for Najib. Sat down at the uh, where you register. Right. Okay. Uh, sat there, waited for him to come out. The Pony Canyon boss, whose uh, translator is my friend's mom, saw me sitting down and said, "Can that boy rap?" So based on what he asked that? Like based on visual. Do you remember what you were yeah, wearing? Yeah, the dressing, mm -hmm. my hair, uh, I had curly hair. She asked my friend, hey, can your friend rap or not? He said, can. He can sing also. <laughs> so <laughs> got me to do the audition there and then, bro. Wow. At the reception area. Then he says, I'll give you my card on Monday. Come down to Pony Canyon, which was at the Capitol building, the right. cinema. Yeah. There was an office part in front. Mm. So come on Monday, that was a Friday. So I had the weekend, then I called my friend, Ashidik, hey, if this is for real, I don't think I can be famous on my own. 
Want to be famous with me? Because if I'm famous on my own, then you're going to treat me like shit. <laughs> <laughs> then at least if we're famous together, we can treat each other like shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. Yeah, so he's like, uh, okay lah. So went to the office and they liked the idea of this fat, cute fella and one good looking six pack fella. Which one were you just? <laughs> oh, I'm the six pack bro. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of shit. Kind of shit, yeah. So went to the office. We try. We we did it in front of him, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, win or lose, Asia Bagus, we sign you a two album contract." Wow! wow. So I had to have my mom's there. Our mom's there because we are only fifteen yeah. and fourteen years old. Our signatures are not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, right, for the youngsters, right, this is this is what happens, and it's even faster now. Huh, from for your youngsters, the light will come for everyone. It will shine for everyone. It's either you grab it or not. And it happens twice in your life. For yourself, what do you think that second light was then? Me meeting my wife. Oh, that's true. Guys, I was famous young. Huh? I mean, I was chucked in uh, Japan for for years, man. Mm. Uh, I, I toured the whole of Japan. And being 15, 16 years old in Japan, where porn is free, mm. Mm. and I'm 15. So you meet that woman who, who will back you up in front of people, mm. but will give it to you back in the bedroom. Mm. You know, like, you know, I, it, it, it's us against the world. If yeah. I say rice is black, I don't need other people. If she's beside me and she say, yeah, rice is black. That's two people against the world. I win, guys. Mm. Mm. But go back home, it's like, hey, you stupid fat. <laughs> <laughs> rice is white. Yeah. <laughs> right, so that will be my second light, meeting my wife. That's how construction site came about. And that's how it all overflowed. And right. uh, from being a student who I wanted to be a lawyer for real, mm. uh, I come from a line of famous lawyers, my family. Wow. So uh, I wanted to be a lawyer, but uh, yeah, I became a rapper quite close one. Yeah. There's actually an interesting story there because both his dad and your grandfather were lawyers. And in yeah. fact, your grandfather knew Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. First friends. So you've actually Ooh. met him a few times. Yeah. So uh, you call him Uncle Harry? Uncle. No. Okay. Uh, no. My, my, I, I've never had a chance to actually personally call him something. Mm. But I've heard my grandfather speak to him. Mm. It's just Kwan. That's wow. Not, uh, wow. Yeah, that's not going to happen that way. <laughs> yeah. And shut him down somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but they were arguing. Right. They, they, they were arguing. But anyway, rest in peace, uh, you know, to, to uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Yeah, we miss you for sure. What was it like, like being, like getting fame so early in life and like having to go to Japan? Was there any like hesitation from your mom? Oh yeah, for sure, bro. My mom and dad were praying that I lose, bro. Oh, the the finals in uh, in 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 Singapore before we led to Japan, being the grand finals. Right. They didn't want me to take this path. Mm. It was an uncharted path. Yeah. Back in the day, guys. Not even now. It's either one or two ways. It's either you, it's your job, means it pays the bills, or it's a career, means you put in your ten thousand hours. Mm. Mm. So mine was definitely a career. My wife, Annabelle, she had a life to build for her own. So for her, it was a job. For me, uh, guys, when we say it's a career, means we do nothing else. Right. <laughs> we artists till die. Yeah. But there's a price to pay for the fame that you ask for. Because you must understand, I didn't leave, guys. I didn't go anywhere. Unlike other artists, right? They believe that across the seas, right would be better for them mm. with the numbers and everything. Mm. I pushed it with my people, guys. Mm. I, I'm a Singapore boy to and true to the end. These people watched me grow, you, you, you know, uh, from 14 years old winning, then becoming who I became, and then seeing me get married, have children, mm. and build a life right in front of their eyes. Yeah. Mm. And I can tell that now, because when I meet them on the street, they hug me, the way they hold me, it's like I'm his hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, and all I have to say is thank you very, very much for allowing me to be who I am. Mm. It's not easy uh, to let a fat guy just like go on stage and shout, shout, shout at your face. <laughs> really, it's not. <laughs> no, when, when, when I was younger, that time and seeing you on TV, right? Which is what Abu Abu is here as well. Abu is man. Yeah, my homeboy, man, for life, man. You number know. one hype man in Singapore. No doubt, man. When you hear 100%. him on the microphone, you know he make you move. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. I'm his yeah. honorary DJ. So. <laughs> <laughs> like seeing you on TV back then in the past, and you see artists, they come out, they do a couple songs. And then for you, and, and we know your means, everyone knows who you are. 
Like back then, I was too young to know why I know who you are. But it's just you are very famous, man. And you go in there, you shout, and then you go yeah yeah, and then you finish. And I was like, wow, I want to make money like that also. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, is this persona that we paint that I would have become a whore if I didn't get married, for example. Mm. You know, but but to be able to go on the microphone and control a crowd, uh, you know, and then to have people and and to be able to perform all around the world. I decided to have a family. Mm. I was like, I think there has to be a sense of control. Mm. I think there has to be a, a level. I think a better legacy would have me have some children. Mm. Was there something that happened that gave you that change in mindset? No, no. It was uh, it was the knowledge of uh, where I was from. He sent me to America to meet all these American artists, and uh, I, I just shake hands with them and just to hear their stories. And you know, it, it's nice to see them one at that level. Mm. But I was never there to play their game. I have Singapore, guys. Mm. That's all you need, man. Malaysia is right here, Indonesia. Uh, I've toured Taiwan, I've done China. Huh. How's that like? Yeah, was weird, man. You're gonna you know, go there, you don't know whether they're gonna understand it's, you. It's, it's weird when you perform and then got no no, no foreigners, bro. Oh, oh, oh I see. Because you get out, what? Before yeah. their national day. Bro, they enjoy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before you go on stage, you're like... Bro, there's no much fear because there's space, uh, guys. The space is abundance. Uh. The people a lot, but the space is very big. Uh. Oh. So the fear is not so much like, yeah, hey, I'll make it through this crowd. Right. <laughs> it gets very yeah. scary when there's not enough space and then too many people. Yeah. Okay. Then it sets the fear in you, but... It's beautiful, bro. People <laughs> are funny, man, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they take a shit without the door. <laughs> bro, for real, literally, right? Yeah, and I'm like, yo, if you want to play this game, I am all for this, yeah. man. I really don't need a door, man. Like, hey, yo, come on, man. Like, we all, if you're okay to see me do a do, we cool, man. Mm. Our level of friendship is high, yeah, man. Yeah, it's very true. It's high level of friendship. Think about it. It is the highest form of comfort when the thing is coming out. Like, <laughs> uh, right? And then it's open door and somebody gets to enjoy it with you. If you're willing to play at that level, bro, we friends for life. I may not remember your name, yeah. but you my blood, yeah. dude. I, I thought it was a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Clues or they're, they're taking a shit no, together. No, it's not allowed. The toilet is so when you squat down, right, you turn to the side, still can see. Yeah. Okay, the big problem I had in China was I didn't know where was the back or the front because they have that <laughs> they have that semicircle thing. Yes, right? yes, yes. So is it from you face that? Oh, oh, oh. 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 So that because yeah. the, the forward P, ma. That's why the guy was like, I was like, ah. <laughs> no wonder you're making eye contact. You're not supposed to make eye contact. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to them, <laughs> If ever this uh, podcast gets to China and somebody watches you, bro, I'm so sorry, man. We look at a clip on Chinese social media. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Getting I come back, closure yeah. 40 years later. If I get to go back there, I I, I would like to... They are doing good, man. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask, right, as a 15, 16 year old, you know, you put out albums and then you go, you are getting tons of gigs and performing at clubs, even when you weren't The worst is we get cash. Oh, okay. Because back in the day, they pay you, man. What was it like handling that <laughs> amount of money, right, as a child, essentially? Bad. We went to the studio and we do a lot of rubbish as children. <laughs> then we didn't know how to put this rubbish on the receipt. So what did auntie accountant say? He just put miscellaneous. <laughs> For $900? Oh my God. Back in the day? Miscellaneous? I said, uh, auntie, how you spell miscellaneous? <laughs> it's and my cash. dot. <laughs> yeah, and then they give you cash. They're like, oh, if you got not enough, we give you first. Bro, it was fast, bro. My parents didn't know how to take it. The recording label uh, came to see them um, and said, uh, we want to record with uh, Heikel. So we have to extend his school life another year. Mm. Extend your school life? Yeah. yeah. So repeat the next year. La. Yeah. Oh. So if he has to extend his school life and means he has to fail his exam. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Which parent can take that? Yeah. yeah. My, my mom will kick me out immediately. Oh, I got kicked out immediately. Oh. Yeah, and then they put me in a Shangri-La. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so your parents say no, but you say yes. Think about it, guys. Yeah. How many times? No, confirm, confirm. How many it's times? So is hard to pass out there. going to happen. Right. Yeah. I also don't know. I don't know what it entails. I don't know what it entails. Yeah. 
Mm. I'm 15, 16 years old and I'm getting all these choices mm. of moving forward into this world of performance and yeah. arts and I'm loving it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think you back know? then there isn't, a, there isn't a middle tier celebrity. You're either a normal person yeah. or you are or celebrity. You know, yeah, mm. because, yeah. It, because what we get was above uh, uh, above the line marketing. Am I using the right term? Yeah. 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 Right term. <laughs> Back in the day, it was all newspapers. Eh? And then they mm. learn where you are. They come, nobody ever took my picture with a phone. Last time it was with a camera, mm. a real camera. Then they have to go and wash it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then find you on the next show so that you can sign it. Mm. So there is that work yeah. being done. So there's this the feeling. Yeah. yeah, there's this feeling that we grow together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, see you at the next show. Of course. Yeah. Mm. You know? D describe to me, like, what, what was what was feeling like back then in, in, in that time in Singapore when you were a teenager? Oh, the country was moving forward, bro. Mm. And everything was uh, in abundance. Uh, people were having a great life. The middle class was doing well due to what was happening out in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But that's too long a story to do right. here. So we were also feeling the wave of success. Mm. Right. You know, it was a beautiful time, bro. It was a time where the middle class of Singapore started to have abundance and looking for entertainment and you were the recipient of it. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Mm. You know, and then suddenly, uh, you know, they wanted to do movies. Mm. Yeah, people were like, like just, let's do local movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. The Singaporean seems to love Singaporeans. Yeah. Yes, we do. We love our people. We, we've always been good at this, guys. We were the first to have film camera. We did news in film camera. We were the first, guys. Mm -hmm. Everything Singapore first. Yeah. You know, we're, we're top notch, man, guys. We're world class, man. You know, and and and, and very proud to be uh, a Singaporean. And feeling like this always uh, helps, bro. Mm. Because I, I, I love the place I come from. So it didn't matter where I perform in this world, mm. whether people clap for me or not. Come back to my Singapore, they love me, man. <laughs> right? From my ICA officer, from the stewardess and stewards, right, man. Right. To the ICA officer, when you come home, right? They're like, hey, Shea Eichel, welcome back, man. Yeah. I said like, my brother. <laughs> Uh, Speaking of movies, right? So a lot of people loved you in Army Days, which is yeah. the ah, original uh, voice yeah. to men, honestly. They still show it now, no? Yeah. To make people feel comfortable when they go to NS. Army Days was a play on stage. Right. Oh. It was a live play. I thought it was the other way around. No, it was a live play. Right. Oh, okay. And they repeated it four times. The first three times, uh, Johari is a bodybuilder, guys. Oh. oh. They went with the bodybuilder one. The fourth time on stage, mm. They asked me to do it and they went with the fatty idea. Yeah. So they liked the fatty idea. So after that yeah. was the was movie. the movie. So I got chosen to do the movie. Right. Oh, okay. Well, then the buff guy must feel like shit though. <laughs> <laughs> he worked out for all these three times. They almost canceled the show. They kicked him out. They saw another guy to make movie. Yeah, yeah the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, see, you work so hard, Simon. You know, this is the one that felt it is the one who's buff. Yeah, I know. Buff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, it's got sand, guys. You know, Michael mm. Chiang, well done. Mm. Uh, you know, it's unbelievable script. So you know, back then we don't have behind the scenes camera, right? Are you able to share with us some of the memorable stories <laughs> that you had, like maybe with the cast, like during the filming of Army Days? The, the care for for the artists uh, was, was good. Was good. Was good. Mm. Uh, you know, we came from a time, old time, you know, so no trailer, but you know, they tried like with the chairs and the umbrellas, but smart lah bro. The timing was superb because I was doing NS at that time. Oh, how so did you work Yeah, I was doing NS. I was mm. in the music and drama company. Oh. Yeah, okay, so okay, the okay, timing okay. was such, you see. Kevin, who's my brother, sister and AC, AAC, yeah. <laughs> uh, was also in music and drama company. Oh, right. Okay, okay. So the, the, you kind of served your NS Filming a movie. Yeah, but I... Okay, oh, wow. okay, 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 hold on. Uh. Be before the men thing, I'm not men. Okay, guys, I'm guts, by the way. Uh. Oh, wow. How yeah. can you be in guts and NBC? Well? Fool, see the voice. See, uh, the buff one. <laughs> 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 it's question, bro. It's question. It's the healthy one. Then it's just question. This guy, every time comes to the healthy shit, he will make noise. Just, just bro, I, I told him it's a mistake, bro. <laughs> 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 I went there with the IC, I was like, yo, Sergeant, how can I be here, man? Yeah. All of a sudden, the bus, go, 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 come on, I need soon, Cam, bro. Mm. Seven BTS, Bravo, you need guts. Wow. 
I like, when they gave me my gun, bro, I M32, you know, with grenade launcher. Whoa! Yeah. Is the M16 with the yeah. additional grenade launcher. I'm like, yeah. guys, I'm in the wrong place, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot be, what, right? But they check and double check, and yeah, I was supposed to be there, man. I got injured during my training. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. So you got you got injured and then you transferred to MBC. No, yeah. stayed, bro. I stayed with my unit. I, I stayed with Seven BTS Bravo unit because uh, I wrote new cheers for them. I did the shit high girl thing. Ah. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, but the only thing that irritated me was like other people do push up, they count like one sergeant to, I have to rap. Ah. Mm. Free show uh, during PT. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> like, like if I cannot half squat, I cannot half squat while rapping. Your balls start to talk to you. Man. <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, are you sure you want to do this? Because I'm about to fall. <laughs> Back then you will be heavy with that. You see that? You see that? No, I do you, I didn't. Didn't. Yeah, do you, do you not see it now? But what? you might tell that you were trying to navigate this in a I was navigating, no, no. no. Okay. I was a 13 pound baby, bro. I am not. Okay, my, my father is like. It's 5 kg, good, no good. Are you sure this is my child? My father said. Right. I was big, I was big. I see, I see, I see. But then when your mom pregnant, then. Well, I don't know. I was, in, I was inside. Uh. Uh, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> His POV is different. Yeah. Besides uh, Thailand having. um. Uh, Joey Boy, the rapper. Mm. Uh, I was the first rapper in Southeast Asia, bro. Not ah. including Singapore and Korea because they were already ahead of us leaps and bounds. Right. They are hip hop. Not including the Philippines because they also were very influenced by the Americans seeing their basketball as a very hardcore sport. So, you know, America had a touch in that. Yeah. So, other than that, right, yeah, I was the first, bro, to do hip hop. So, it was right. something not very understandable at that time in Singapore. Yeah. So, we made it cute, lah, bro. You know, and music and drama company helped. The steps I took or the decisions that I made uh, all had to do with the spread and love of hip hop. Mm. Uh, if, if now is the time to tell my secret out to people, then I tell you all the secret. Check everything I do, man, from the children's show, from Knockout, to mm. everything that I have touched, sure got hip hop on. Mm. Right. Because it is something that I, 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 I love so much. It's my first love, I guess. Are you able to put into words like, what is it about hip hop that has captured you so much? It transcends time. And because of hip hop, I always feel like it's never the color of the skin, but it's the vibe within. Mm. You know, they, it, it's, it's always you find people from inside out. It's entertainment at a different level. Its creation was to attract people to come and listen to sermons in Africa. You oh know, shit, really? Yeah, bro. That, that was how hip hop uh, rapping and hip hop came about. Right. They used to play the drums to attract the people to come, then stop, and then the the people would talk. Right. Mm. But the people would leave. So you say, how do we make the people stay to listen? Don't stop the drums. Mm. Talk over the drums, guys. So they'll keep the music going, and then they oh. would listen. Yeah. And that's what was brought to America by African Bombata. If you listen to the first few songs that came out, me pissing on the street, drugs related, yeah. mm. broken glass, and very simple, simple rap, just to show people the way that they were living. Mm. To tell people that so it was always very dark, very, always about murder. Then it came to me who had to sell it uh, to the people of Singapore who knew it as that. Yeah. Mm. So we had to make it cute. Yeah. Right? Nice looking guy. Yeah. And then cute looking teddy bear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now go on stage and jump. Jump, 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 jump. Right. Yeah. Why, yeah. why did you think back then in Singapore you actually had to repackage it to make it cute? Oh, what bro. if you didn't, you think? Oh, and kept it gangster? Yeah. There were others, bro. There were others after me. Mm. We There were so many groups that came up after that to try to be gangster mm. with all their tag rags and the way they dress. Cannot, bro. It's, it's yeah. not going to work. There's something about hip hop that it, that it needs to be relatable to your own life almost. And yes. like quite a lot of the gangster rappers because that was what they were experiencing. Yeah, it's always real. That's what I always tell these rappers. Yeah. Rap really what you rap about. Yeah, yeah. don't rap about the American streets where you yeah. don't know. Lah. Not even that, bro. Don't rap about driving a car if you don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To that level. Right. Write about something relatable. Like I want to hear. Even if it's about the love for your mom, mm. that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. This is real. I come from a good family, spoiled child. Uh, you know, uh, my mother and father always take care. 
<laughs> right? Then after that, it's so uh, real. <laughs> right? It is. It, it's a real. Yeah. It is real thing. So my 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 muse has always been love. The other thing is, I opened every shopping center in Orchard Road, guys. <laughs> right. So what, their big launch. Yes. Right. Okay. All their launches I did from Wisma Atria to Scotts to Far East Plaza, wow. uh, to Takashimaya to Center Point. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, the whole Orchard Road. Yeah. Takashimaya's opening had to be done at seven a.m. on a Monday morning because the Feng Shui Master said so. Oh. Can you imagine rapping to nothing? Yeah. <laughs> and it's 7 a.m. Uh, the lion dance and dragon dance to nothing. Uh, huh? And then the fireworks, palm, confetti. Fireworks in the day. Nobody, yeah. Because the function master said so. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're not about to argue, they pay you a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And also the function quite good uh, until today still. Still like, around. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Takashima is still around, man. Right? So. <laughs> oh, because you started singing at seven. That's well, crazy, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> me, whatever they believe, man, you know, I yeah, just yeah. want to be a part of it, man. So, when the opportunities came for, like, say, movie or even, like, hosting that was outside of, like, music, was that, like, a side quest that you just wanted to try out? Was young. That? Young and money. Mm. Yeah, young, money, fun, sponsorship. Uh, Stussy had my back, bro, for oh. 11 years. Sure. Mm. Yeah, my second movie, uh, City Sharks. Oh, yeah, I hope you all check it out on Netflix. Thanks, guys. Hey, but but uh, yeah, uh, that one fully fully taken care of by Stussy, man. Wow. Yeah, so spoiled, bro. Somebody asked if I die and God asked whether I want to come back and do somebody else yeah. or do Heikel one more time. I do Heikel okay. one more time. Can you say that, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I might want chess, huh? No. <laughs> you and Ashidik started the first, essentially, what is a rap group in yes. Singapore, right? What was the biggest difference when you went solo? I don't know. Maybe this crowd can help me. The three of you are maybe more versed in this. But by my recollection and looking back in time, there is never a duo that lasts the length of time. No duo, ever. Can you come up with a duo that lasted, that didn't fight? Musical? Musical. No, none. Mm. Always three. Mm. Because there's always a mediator when two people fight. Yeah. Mm. But if it's two people, right? So uh, the closest to me, of course, is construction site, me and then, and then if you want to talk about it, Malaysia, too fat. Yeah. Also two people, right? Mm. Yeah. Wham, also quarrel. Simon and Garfunkel, also quarrel. Mm. Uh, the, the, the only one that comes to mind is M2M. S2S? That, that's where I went. That's mm. where I went mentally, <laughs> musically. No, but it's true. Uh, no, yeah. no, no. Mirror, mirror hanging on the wall. <laughs> I think, I think the less you say the better. <laughs> you have heard that don't pretend you're too cool to listen to M2M. M2M was insane. M2M, the, the name like suspect. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it struck a chord. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very early 2000s. <laughs> oh, but, but, but most of them, yeah, they make yeah, it. Yeah, um, Hall and Notes, the, the yeah, White Notes, Stripes. Uh, the the Kellis Whisper guy, what is his name? George Michael. George Michael. Yeah, Wham didn't make it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So there's no duo that ever made it. So when we broke out, okay, it was very sad. Mm. But uh, I didn't know that the recording label was uh, already intending to sign me as a solo. Right. Oh. So at the same time, I was like, oh man, you, why why we do this? And like, hey shit, I'm still being famous. <laughs> 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 so torn. Uh, uh. Yeah, and then he went to Tomasic Polytechnic to start uh, studying uh, design. Right. right. Yeah. You, you guys yeah. still stay close? No. Okay. I closed the chapter uh, with the last song I wrote with uh, Charlie Lim. Mm. Recently, yeah. a few years. So I say, what's up? He actually got it. He says, yeah, well, you wrote a song about me. Oh. I was like, yeah, bro. Cause you know, I did my, I did my 50%. I met you halfway, but I never saw you right. at that. You know, you didn't come and- Meet me halfway. Yeah, me, yeah. I'm, I'm tired really, yeah, bro. Like he hasn't come to the chicken rice shop yet, but, right. but he called and said he wants to come. Mm. Okay. So yeah, hopefully he it's makes it. Yeah. yeah, not bad, but uh, you know, friends will always be friends. Mm. Of course, there were things that happened in our relationship that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, we had a great life together, man. We, mm. you know, the, the 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 fame part, we never thought we'd live that life, you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, he 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 once thanked me for it. Just now you mentioned the song that you wrote with Charlie Lim. Yes. Uh, so I say, what's up? Yeah. It's actually uh the first song in a series of songs that you released as part of your final album. Yes. So what was it that you know at the end at thirty years and then you decided to. This is the time to take a step back. Hang up the oh yeah, 49 years old, man, guys, you know, to jump on stage, uh, a bit funny. Uh, not not feeling the, the same as we did last time. And the young cats are good. If you're not going to play the part of helping, if you're not going to play the part of giving back, then you're, you're nothing better than a sponge, right? You just absorb, 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 and it's all about you. 
Yes, it has been like that for 30 over years. It's the game that we play. That's why people say, you hit the player, hit the game. But the new cats are great. Right. You know, and so I think it's time to open uh, the floodgates mm. and let them and let them out. You know, mm. all of them. They say, you know, I've brought it this far, and it's for them a much easier route. Yeah. Mm. Because my my forefathers before me didn't cover a specific path like hip hop. That one, it was a path called entertainment. Yeah. Mm. Then we found our arm. So my my people would be people like uh, Najib Ali, R. Chandran. Uh, Dick Lee, mm. Kumar, um, and uh, Chris Ho. Hey, brother, rest in peace. Miss you, man. Uh, you know, so these are the people that are uh, uh, before me and carved out the path and always be grateful to them. Yeah. What you would you say is the biggest challenge you face carving the path for hip hop in Singapore? Acceptance, to get it on the main stage. The main song has always been something lullaby-ish, slow, right? So to get it on that main level, we had to work it in a different way. Urban Exchange, I think if you all remember, mm. there was an Urban Exchange. Together with me, we got it on the main stage and we had to work together mm. to show that it was more harmonious, to have a rap within a song and not a pure rap, yeah. mm. right? But just to get hip hop on stage, because the performances around it was bicycle, skateboard on a ram. Mm. Right. So we are opening the eyes of Singaporeans like, yo, we got this. Yeah. You know, right? And after that year, right, everything was so much easier. After that year, hip-hop. everything was hip hop. Every, uh, Every time. corporate jingle was hip hop. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> so it's this thing that we did, which started for the grim and grime of the ghetto. Yeah. But uh, yeah, look at where we are now, man. It's, it's, it's great 50 years on from now. I think, yeah, great position and Singapore, I still say we got the number one uh, rapper in Singapore. Uh, for us, mm. I dare put us up amongst uh, anybody. We, we we got this. Who you have your eyes on? Uh, I think the new cats like uh, yeah. Young Raja. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he plays a mean game. Faris Jabba, Faris. if he mm. finds himself. You know, we got uh, Aesop. Uh, we got uh, Abang Sapau. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- great writer and that one. Yeah. Oof, strong as shit. What are your thoughts on uh, Sugar going on a Chinese competition? Oh, I didn't even mention Sugar and, and yeah. Kevin Lester yet. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, Kevin Lester. Yeah, yeah. Sugar's yeah, always a brother of mine. He'll do us proud. He's ready to 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 take on that market. Mm. And uh, yeah, he sounds good doing it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it wasn't always so, right? I feel like Sugar had a rough start. No doubt. Yeah. Doesn't everybody. I think everybody had to have a... a, 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 a if you didn't have a rough start, then you would trip along the way mm. to make this a career, uh, to put in your 10,000 hours. I think Shiga paid the price. Mm. Uh, Shiga's a good boy. Uh, he paid the right price, uh, met the right people, went through the right channels and was very courteous about it. Yeah, yeah, Humble. he did it the right way. We should be very, very proud of him. Very proud of him, yes. Is there a piece of advice that you would always give to young artists? You know, if it's really something that you want to do, don't give up. The competition that you have now is unbelievable, guys. You know, we have people being famous every 15 seconds of the day. Take out your pens in the middle of a car park straight away. Ah, famous. Ooh, 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 ooh. They make a meme about you or something. Ah, 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 ah. It's uh, unbelievable how you become famous now. Because you know this, please be responsible. Mm. That's the advice that I have for them. Because mm. a trend that you start may end a life. Mm. if you're not careful. For yourself personally, right, what would you say is the favourite song that you've ever written? Wow. The first song that comes to mind is With You La. Mm. That was about Annabelle. Again, you know, I mean, uh, if you want to go dabble about songs, all number one hits in the world are all ra- written out of sadness, darkness. There's no happy song. One. Yeah. It comes from pain. It comes from, you know, even if the happiness is so, it comes from pain. And uh, Annabelle left me once and I wrote that song. So that came from- Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. And then uh, Siesta was another one. Still steady. How did you meet Annabelle? Uh, so if I remember correctly, you, you guys got engaged quite fast, right? Uh, five months I married her. Wow. Oh, sh- How, yeah. Why she say yes? I look better uh, somehow when you all are drunk. Tipsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 goggles. <laughs> yeah, they say I look nice. So I was like, okay. Now I look at Ryan Gosling. Mm. And I really think I look like right. You do, you do. You're in the shape though. Yeah. Yeah, when you say yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, met her at Zook, mutual mm. friends. She was doing vids at that time. Uh, What's that? An, an alarm MTV show. Oh, like oh, MTV. oh yes, 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 yes. It was called Vits. Yeah. And then met her on set of my sitcom, which was Three Rooms. Mm-hmm. And then uh, put in the gear 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's like nervous and everything. It's like, um, you, you need a smoke? You need to have a, a cigarette? She's like, yeah, yeah. Let's go outside. I was like, nah, you, you can smoke here. Oh. Mm. Then she's like, are you for sure? I said, like, yeah, please. Go ahead. <laughs> you easy, so easy. The game. Life is easier when you're famous, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was the move. I remember Francis of Singapore sweetheart. Eh? Wow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like her, bro. Mm. Yeah, she was that. But uh, I liked her more. You mm. know, we went to Zook a lot. So there was this one big line, bro. The cars all the way outside, long line. She gives me a call and she says, uh, oh, we're here, but we're the last car. I see, yeah, no problem. So call the bouncers to stop the traffic on the other side, get the last car to drive down the one-way road mm. so that she can park her car first. Oh. Then the boyfriend say, hey, thanks, thanks, Michael, thanks. I like, no worry, she will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> there was an interesting quote, I believe, from Annabelle in an article interview that I think she did, that she talked about when she first, uh, I'm not sure connected or reconnected with you, you went everywhere with like an entourage. And then yeah, she sure. looked at you and she was like, oh, I'm never gonna like this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she was in, uh, she was, uh, well, GC. No, no, she was too young, shit. Just primary school. Yeah, <laughs> 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 cool, yeah. yeah. Shit, man. Eh? No, <laughs> no, no, not cool. Maybe she, <laughs> she was around 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 she wasn't. Uh, she was in secondary school and I was mm. in uh, Our Lady of Lutz. Right. Oh. And we we're just neighbors, and uh, she, yeah, we always had an entourage. It's always that look, you know, that hip hop look where you have your people ro rolling yeah. with you, yeah. yeah. And uh, she was coming the opposite way. We make sure that her group moved, man, you know, <laughs> while we're coming down the path, yeah. 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 What I thought was interesting was also, so yeah, goes, you, yeah. did, yeah, uh, cool. you did like a renovation series with her, right? On yes. YouTube, I watched. Yes. And in the very first episode, she actually said that who we see as Sheikh Haiko is not who she sees. And yeah, like at home, yeah, yeah. what would you say is like the biggest difference? He's very sweet la. I, I, I approach him in private moments with his wife. Different, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm for them first. Belle is very giving that way because uh, she knows me. She knows yeah. that uh, it's all an, uh, an act, you know? It's a game, like that. Mm -hmm. it's a game. I would be frightened to hurt the person who I'm using to make me better. Yeah. I don't want to hurt that thing. Yeah, you know that makes you the best version of yeah, yourself. Yeah, but mm. have I? Uh, yes, of course, of course. Okay. It's got nothing to do with a, any other party or anything. Yeah. It's um, hurting her as a human being. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think that's the worst. You know, don't be a man that's afraid to apologize. Mm. Say sorry, sorry, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, hence the reason why I kind of sat as a DJ that time. Oh, oh. yeah, because like yeah, because I never apologize for what I said. I'm right. a man, but mm. I'm very sorry to the parent that I um, moved the feeling. Yeah. Sorry, what was the argument? So there was, was 97 a, with the Daniel I know she got it there. Yeah. <laughs> there I was know. a remark that he made when yeah. a teenage male listener called in for advice on how to attract a girl that he liked. Ooh. And then he kind of made like a sex joke, like kind yeah. of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. a lewd joke. And then- Singapore was at a turning point of wokeness like that time, I assume. Everybody was trying to push the envelope, but right. you know, it's shit. Yeah. So a lot of people complained <laughs> that the station got fined and uh, he right. got fined. Yeah. Okay, so let me get the story straight. So <laughs> he called, how do I get this girl's attention? So I, just, just, I said, just rock up to her and ask her, yo, are you wearing white panties? That's it. Right. That's all I said. And that's it, I keep quiet. Right. And my partner, Daniel Ong at that time, stopped the thing and then went on. Mm. Then the engineer of that day thought that that was funny. It is funny, mm. yeah. Yeah, used that to repeat the <laughs> 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 so, Yeah, I feel like something that you could have gotten away with it. Like only that, that, that listener of the day listen. Yeah. Yeah. Then the fact you always a promo. A like. parent wrote to the newspaper. Mm. Yeah. And Lee Kuan Yew went, what is Sheikh Haikal up to again? Mm. That's all he had to do. Mm. And the office, uh, the late Lee Kuan Yew's office shake. Then the guys say, shake my rice bowl. I'm going to call Media Corp. Yeah. And shake his rice bowl. Mm. And the guys say, shake Haikal's rice bowl. Yeah. But at that time, I was only a radio DJ. What rice bowl are you talking about? Mm. Yeah. As a radio DJ, they took all your songs and put them to class D. You cannot promote right. your own songs, what? Right. Just imagine you promote your own song. Mm. Oh, the next song coming out is the best song in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Never ever has anybody written a song like this before. Yeah. 
right? Mm. So you can't do that. I said that with the cleaners of intentions. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, it blew up, bro. It blew up. It went all the way to America. Ooh. Right. They have a white panties day for me, bro. Ooh. That, that, that DJ, what's his name? The DJ that talks dirty. Howard Stern? Howard, no. uh. Is it Howard Stern? No, I was like, yeah, look, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He and his Robin, the friend, yeah, the, the co star here did a white panties day for me. Oh, wow, yeah, for the DJ who got sacked for saying white panties, yeah, wow. <laughs> and then he didn't lose much, so like, the radio seller is not, oh, got sacked and got fined thirty thousand dollars. Oh, okay, okay, they're not fine, but the radio station paid, yeah, mm, oh, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, but I got sacked, yeah, okay, I got be, I, I, I was made an example. Yeah. yeah, a very big example. But after that, he went another show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did another show. But then after the, the things that they did on the radio, more hardcore than that, That's man. Right. Yeah. After that, you go on national day. Okay, like, everybody won. Uh. Everybody, yeah. So, you know, yeah. again, I apologize to that parent. I didn't think much of it. Mm. Yeah. But now as a parent, I would understand what I put her through. You mm. know, she actually made it loud to share my answer, thinking that Sheikh Haikal would give a proper mm. boss answer for yeah, her children right. to hear too. You see, so I wasn't being responsible. But I told my boss at that time, right? Yeah. The radio boss, right? I could have said something worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And you know what she Not said? Radio, what is it? We we did um, office tour of this. And and I recounted the story. You, so you are the reason you saw the long dining table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you. You like yeah, you. I, I remember um, when, when we moved to the new office and you came in and you gave a few words to, to the then company. Yeah. And then you say a family that, that eats together will stay together. For life, yes. Same. So ah, since then, nice. every single office we moved to, we have had a long ass dining table. Nice, yeah. nice. So yeah. let's go sit at your dining table. For sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I believe in that till today. That hence the reason why I try and open restaurants. It, it's a way for me to meet the people after all these years, mm. to thank them, to hear their story. Uh, you know, to have people come up to me and say, I named my son after you. Wow. Yeah, you know, or, you know, to meet them and have them be able to tell me these things. Yeah. yeah. And, and at the same time, thank you. And then at the same time, makan. Yeah. Mm. Because this is the food that I'm providing. Trust me, I've eaten so much of it. Come have some with me. Yeah. And when we break bread like that, uh, there's always something that you and me, at one moment in time, had the same thing off flowing in our blood. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the food. Wow. I have an yeah. important question sure. for everyone who loves your food. Do you have plans to bring Fat Papas back? No doubt, no doubt. It's something that I had to take a period for a while. I had to close. You know, the building was not safe. So we have to look for a new location. Uh, but without a doubt, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? It's uh, something halal and something very necessary. Mm. So uh, just waiting for John actually to have the money to open with me. Yeah, I would <laughs> love to actually, would we? You know, yeah. Could we? Yeah. Yeah. You know my first, um, what's that burger? That, that Impossible Burger, my first Impossible uh, Burger is- Was that same? Yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, it was oh, the same, yeah. yeah. I remember he was describing it. He's like, when you cut it, you see the blood come out like, bro, until today, yeah. I can't even get it from there. That leaves red free, yeah. 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 From the blood, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, incredible. Yeah, you made it a bit gross, la, but it tasted great. La. No, but they tried to explain to me why sometimes tree got blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in school, you know, it, this tree bleeding, is it the soul? Undo, the pointy No, the soul inside it stuck and you're trying to come out. Yeah. No, but I still remember going to Fat Papa's and I think there was just a general vibe of like love in the place. And I think yeah, like yeah. dining and like having you ex like explain the food also, there was so much love. Yeah. There, yeah. there was this concept that you told me about that I, I found quite interesting and I think about it a lot also. That in the search for your, I don't know whether you even remember saying this. In the search for an FMB concept, of course you will have to speak to certain chefs to figure out the halal version, right? Yes. And the chefs will come back and say, I, I made a better one. Yes. And then you say, no, I don't want better. Better. I want, I want same but halal. Uh, yeah. Do you remember saying yes, that? Yeah, that was like, well, that to me, that to me was was very interesting. Yeah. In, in do I, I don't want better. Better, everybody will try and make it's something better. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But I want same. Mm. If you can have it and it's not pork, yeah. I want same. Mm. That's why chicken rice. Mm. Chicken rice is a dream, guys. It's like an unbelievable dream that came true. <laughs> that we can now I can eat unbelievable amount of chicken rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's mine. <laughs> you don't need to go to hell for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to visit hell, but I have to visit because I went to Butongki. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, but you gotta do market study, lah. You gotta go to market study. I gotta yeah. take one for the team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone has to do it. Yeah, so you actually went to do a comparison with Butongki to see whether it's actually same. No, I'm basing it on memory. Right. Okay. So Butongki is something I visited when Zook 
uh, when it opened at River Valley Zook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And at that time, they only sell chicken rice. No pork, no tofu, yeah. nothing. They had that and raw fish. That's oh. it. You know the raw fish yeah. case, the one that the guy had to come off the hand, they stopped what the raw fish did because it was... Okay, was okay, it, yeah, okay. If you look, the, if okay. you research back, right, right. that's why he had to stop. That's how Haikan Chi came about. Right. Actually, I don't have to hide. Huh? The two people that brought me there was Najib Ali and <laughs> Fiona Tan. Right. Yeah. Najib's girlfriend. I see. Yeah, they brought me there and then they said, just shut up and eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no problem. <laughs> See that. Bro, it was so my nice, expertise. bro. Yeah. So I was like, if they can have it, they meaning my Chinese brothers and sisters, yeah. Yeah. why can't I have it? Mm. Yeah. There's no pork. You know, we got a lot of Hainanese chicken rice halal, but why is it not this like this? Yeah. Cannot be... The chef, what? Wow, just go eat pork, you don't wash hand. Cannot, yeah. <laughs> Cannot be what, right? Yeah. He looks like a damn clean chef, sir. Research, bro. Let's go. Right. Rendered it, check the sauce. Everything must be halal from the fish sauce. Right. The, then mm. the chicken sauce must be cooked. And then the, the chicken must be dipped in a certain amount of time so that the blood coagulates because the, we don't like to see blood on the bone. Yeah. Mm. Then after that, it must be deboned. The only thing that's left is the wing part that people like to chew. Mm. Either than that, mustn't have any bone at all. Right. And then the chili has to be a certain kind of texture where you put on the chicken and it doesn't slide off. So it's a certain kind of thickness that must be hot. So hot that you all don't eat so much. When you all don't eat so much, you all drink some water and then when you go back to the chili again, the cucumber is long. <laughs> Unlike when the Muslim people cut it, it's round. Yeah. Mm. And then you all cut it without any skin on it. Then the rice has to be oily, don't forget. Then it has to, cannot be joined. It has to be yeah. fluff. Yeah. Right? Be then, yeah. And it has to have aroma. I've but, never heard anyone describe chicken rice so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Description yeah. of chicken rice. Come, yeah. come, Haikuchi, guys. Yeah. I, 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 so. I, with my Chinese partners, they say we got it. So I believe mm. them is, yeah, the people are coming. And uh, we're doing well. And uh, again, it's my people who support and love me. Right. But so I have to give this good food because there was a void. Mm. Oh, I'm hungry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. oh. hey, so I love food, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, I can know. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, she's crazy, yeah, 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 she crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die, <laughs> sir. <laughs> she, I'm gonna die. I'm always so impressed with yourself on the way you describe it. I can tell, sir. Have you ever gone broke? Uh, yes, 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 yes. How yes. how much after your superstar, your rise of superstar? I say at the changes, you know, at the time when things change, label to another label. Right. Right? Then you want to clear stuff up and you got to pay for stuff. Bad accounting. Mm. Yeah, never take care. Also God hip-hop bro. culture. Yeah, young, dumb, full of cum. <laughs> uh, God, that will do it, <laughs> brother. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's another, there's another one. So how, did, how did you get past it? Like, how old were you then? Uh, you slowly bled away or there was this major miss that you made? My family came into play. Mm. Uh, mommy was never going to let a uh, baby boy suffer. My dad, although rough and tough, mm. uh, could, could never see me uh, uh, suffer, I guess. Yeah. They were always there and, uh, you know, every time I fall. Uh, so much so that I must say that when uh, being a big boy now and having my own family, there are times when I miss that, man. And uh, noticing my mom and dad becoming old, I'm scared. Mm. Uh, I feel fear. Mm. I feel, uh, and these are all new feelings to me. Mm. And uh, all this I put as the price I pay for the fame that I requested for. A mother has a way of talking to a child that makes you feel all right. Yeah. Mm. Mm. They don't even settle the problem for you. And you feel okay, guys. I never has that with the children. Yeah, the fear of not being able to have that, you know. Mm. Not being able to make that call. And just tell her the problem. Mm. Hey, mommy, my son is an asshole. Mm. I don't know how to handle this. What do I do? To be a better person so that I handle my son better, you know? For mm. example, mm. I got a great son, by the way. You mm. do have a great son. I make yeah, a yeah, super. Yeah. I just use that as an example because yeah. you call your mom and ask for something, right? Yeah. Mm. And she's like, uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll be coming to the house. I cook for you that gravy. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I love you too, my mommy. Shit, I feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> Sun's still an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ability, you, you know? Yeah, yeah so yeah. mother's got that ability and uh, yeah, the fear of not having them around and you know, mm. if you have a father that's still with you, sure got dad, daddy problems on. It's just this father thing, which I think I, I have with my son now. You want a certain level for them. Yeah. You know, and 
and you know that they are able to do it. Mm. And when they don't do it, you get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you got to keep cool. Anger is an energy that is wasted upon a person who doesn't give a f- about you. Yeah. Don't be angry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So chill. For yourself also, you actually became a father at 26, which if you look at today's day and age, we consider that actually really young. Yeah. Mm. How do you think that changed you at that age? Oh, good question, man. This one. Wow. She's good. Yeah. Thank you. She's very good. Uh, I'm not even going to lie. I wasn't ready. Mm. I was not ready. Uh, I looked at Belle and Belle's like, we got this. I'm wow. like, oh, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, okay. like, I like the making part. <laughs> very good at it. Yeah. Love it. Like this part, uh, you just oh wow! <laughs> all you all know. I know, all I know is make them laugh every day. You know, have that forty days, and in that forty days, you better be there with them. Mm. Uh, their their leg cannot touch the floor. Like confinement period. Yeah, confinement yeah. period. And then before that, when they're pregnant, right? Always be there, laugh. I think Belle had an easier uh, pregnancy than most women because. I look pregnant all the time, bro. Mm. Yeah, so everything she's feeling, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta shift it to the left. <laughs> you give her the tips. <laughs> See, the only person that has something. Uh, you realize that? I'm trying to participate. You realize that? You know, it's to the left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're nearing the end of the episode, but not without doing our painting, painting of, of the, the episode. episode. So the Daily Catch-Up is a proud partner of Shaping Hearts, which is an all-inclusive arts festival supporting local artists with disabilities. And so today's artist that we are spotlighting is named Irfan Ryan. He has been diagnosed with autism. And this piece of art right here has a very cute name. It's called Doodle Maggie. And so what Irfan enjoys doing is painting art pieces with a lot of depth and detail. And you can see, I mean, maybe from the camera you cannot see, but... Yeah. A close up will be inserted here. There's just so much to look at and discover. It's really, really beautiful. And like, as you are looking through the painting, you have, there's just so many like little details that you're mm. like looking at. So it's very, very good. Uh, if you come down to the event on October 19, uh, you might find it gone because I already might have beaten you to it to buy it. Uh, but please come down again, like Denise mentioned, we're supporting this beautiful event that supports artists with disabilities. So we'll be at our Tempanese Hub on the 19th of October and we'll see you there. Thank you, Dan. Okay, so a big thank you to Shake Iger for joining thank us today. Thank you so much. Had so thank much fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, man. Really. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. When I think about you, I touch myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can be the best father, mm. right? Somebody peeing. Yeah, why not? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is new. It really traveled. Yeah. And the pacing of the water sound really sounds like someone is peeing. So suspect, yeah. <laughs> but peeing is very, very like relieving though. You all like the pee? I love, love, love the pee. I mean, I love to shit more than I like to pee. La. You shit more, I pee. Oh, pee shit. Ah. Uh. Oh. Every time you shit, you must pee. Oh, yeah, 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 I think yeah. so too, I think so too. There's no way, yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Is that a good try? But me and Bill, we donated a lot of uh, to- uh, toilets. Oh, okay. Rural areas mm-hmm. in uh, second world countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third world countries, sorry. Sorry, a stupid joke. Yeah. From these third world countries. <laughs> We donate toilets. Mm. Then Bell asks, why toilet? I go, so like, Bell, you give a person a nice place to, uh, you know, that feeling of relief and the guy thinks of you. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that best moment, right? Yeah. The release moment, like, oh, I the go. guy who gave the toilet. <laughs> I like how we came full circle. We started with yeah. do-do in China. Do-do's in China. Do-do's in the whole country. 